Can you all hear me? Yes. Is that on? Hello. There we go. All right. Great. All right. So hi, um, I'm Emil. I founded Tendi. We're a hardware marketplace for people that make their own hardware, robots, drones, 3D printers, circuit boards, PCBs, you name it, they sell it on our site. So we have over 1,000 sellers in over 50 countries around the world, and we sell to anyone from hobbyists to NASA, Fortune 500 companies um, around the world. And uh, I'm also on the board of OSHWA, the Open Source Hardware Association. So. Um, I, I'm coming at this from, I guess, an, an interesting perspective here, which is people that are making hardware and, and actually trying to produce products and get them out to the world. So this is an example of one of our earliest products that showed up on the site. So this was made by a, a maker in the US that uh, this is actually a clock. So it's a QR code clock. Um, it's, it's actually a joke. So to, to read the time, you have to hold your cell phone up, which has the time on your cell phone as you're trying to read the time. Um, so, the funny, th th well that's funny in itself, but the, the more funny part was basically he, um, he only made $380 after selling a, a, a few hundred of these because he ran into supply chain issues where manufacturing boards and actually getting components back from suppliers in China came back as, a, as kind of this boondoggle where the PCBs he got were defective and also some of the parts were defective. So he assembled all of these clocks and then once he started to test realized that they were defective and had to do another production run. And so that's kind of the problem that's going on right now is makers are coming up and prototyping is made so easy from Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and all these platforms. It's then a question of how do you scale and how do you grow? And no one has a real good answer for that and everyone's kind of going through the growing pains at the same time. And so basically my talk is gonna be on that whole process of how do you scale, what are the solutions, what have we tried, and kind of what's going on around the world. So, uh, in looking at manufacturing, I'm not sure how many people here have ever gone through the manufacturing process. How many people here have manufactured a product, physical product? Anyone? Okay, a couple. So this will, this will be normal for you all, but um, to give everybody else kind of a, a run through of what does the actual manufacturing process look like for bringing physical hardware into the world. So this is Vortex. This was a quadcopter that just, just came out, um, or I think it's just being sold recently. So th they posted all of their photos on Facebook of the manufacturing process, which usually manufacturers do not want you to actually take very high def photos of manufacturing. Um, I, I'll, I'll show you some other products in a second that I, I went to the factory and they basically said no photos allowed. So I, I grabbed these photos the minute I saw them because they're not very, you don't see photos like this very often. So this is basically, they're testing the assembled PCBs um, to go into the machine. So you know, the higher the, the production, the more automated it gets. So this is automated, if you're doing a small volume, um, you're actually going to have people that are hand testing this. So the, uh, n notice this is not a machine. So you actually have people on the line, this is in China, that are actually physically assembling cables and attaching them to the motors. So these are the injection molded um, components that are going into the frame. Uh, again, this is, you know, you've got a conveyor belt and basically people are assembling them on a line where you have potentially hundreds or thousands of people in a factory that literally have line after line after line, and this is what they're doing, just doing one little task every single, you know, every couple of seconds. Uh, so you've got final assembly, and, uh, you know, the, the net result of this is it's very difficult. So if you, you know, if you follow any of the news on Kickstarter, um, I'm sure you guys have crowdfunding platforms here that, that are very similar, Indiegogo, you hear the stories of people that go through the process, and it is it much more difficult than they've ever imagined, because this is the first time they've ever done it, you know. Most of the time, you're, you're a software person, and you go, well, how hard could it be? Well, it's much more hard than you expect. So this was an article that was in the New York Times um, last month about an espresso, espresso maker that they basically realized, well, it's, it's much more difficult, and they ran out of money. And that's obviously not a, a new story by any stretch of the imagination. So the, the one line from this entire point was, to make 2,000 of something, you have to make 2,000 of something. And that's kind of the, where the rubber meets the road where you actually have to go through that process to really understand the economics and whether or not it's feasibly possible to build a product. So one solution that we tried was, we've got thousands of sellers on our site, we have hundreds of thousands of visitors that come to Tendi every month, how can we actually take advantage and build the community, uh, you know, build a platform so that the community can actually start to share and collaborate on this simple problem of how do you find manufacturers, how do you find good manufacturers, how do you scale quicker? So this is what we tried was um, Tendi Biz, 
Uh, and so uh, it was basically a Yelp for manufacturing. So I worked at Yelp seven, eight years ago very early on. Uh, and so we basically applied that same sort of model of you can list projects and letting the community kind of crowdsource this problem of listing manufacturers and then actually um, writing recommendations, saying who had a good experience, who had a bad experience, and, and what was the net result. So um, in testing this, we actually found out that it was actually a very bad solution to this problem. Uh, people were not leaving reviews and not recommending manufacturers that they've used. And the simple reason was people are very competitive with who are their suppliers, and they see this as a competitive advantage. Um, for Yelp, it's something where people feel like you're in the know, you feel very cool and hip that you know this great little niche restaurant that nobody else has ever heard of. If you've got a business, people see it as a competitive advantage, and if they share that, then the next company coming after them is gonna be able to scale and grow quicker um, and basically eat their lunch, so to speak. And so that's what we found is people were not as open. Um, even though we are the largest open hardware marketplace in the world, the companies that are, share their open designs and schematics are not really willing to share their manufacturers. So basically, I went to China to try and see, is there a better way? What's going on in China? That's what everybody says, is go to China, go to China, go to China. And that's what I did. So um, how many people here have ever heard of Shanzai? Anyone? All right, another few. So um, this is Shenzhen. So uh, if, if you ever want to see what is going on in the state of the electronics world, go to Shenzhen. Um, you just fly into Hong Kong, take a van across the border, it's super easy, uh, and you'll get a real world, you know, smack in the face, kind of what the state of, of electronics industry is. So basically you've got blocks and blocks and blocks of buildings that are six, seven stories tall, and these are all vendors selling components um, from it, it bare components, cables, motors, to laptops, tablets, you name it, they make it. Uh, you want a Segway, you can get one for $100. You want a tablet, you can get it for 10. You can get anything really for as cheap as you could imagine. And how do they do that? Um, so it's just to kind of test, so one of these is a real Apple Watch, and one of them is a fake watch that I bought in Shenzhen in March before the Apple Watch was actually out. So um, who thinks the real watch is on the left? Let's, we'll just give a test. We'll see if you guys can pick out the real one versus the, the Chinese version. So raise your hand if you think the Apple Watch is on the left. Okay, and who thinks it's on the right? So it's the one on the left. So most of you are wrong. Um, so the, the, the other, so the, the one, that, the fake one that I just showed is the one on the left. The, the one on the right is a previous version. So what's going on in China is they basically said, um, okay, we're hearing Apple's making a smartwatch. We're gonna start working on it. So they released the one on the right months ago the one on the left came out uh, in March, started selling in April. Every month they iterate and are producing a next better version of the one before it. So they are iterating on a monthly cycle and they can change over their production lines within a week to basically move to that new product. So to, to put that in perspective, we looked at the, the Kickstarter projects that were failing. China is iterating every single month and our teams here cannot iterate you know, over six months or a year uh, and actually even get a physical product out the door. And so how, how is that possible? What is going on that makes them do that? How do they collaborate? What is different about China? And this is basically you know, the, the reality. They're basically using reference boards from the chip manufacturers, the same common board in most of their products, and then they basically iterate on the casing. So they're then uh, using that same board in both watches. So the the, the board on the left is actually from the orange watch that it's, is, is no more, and the, the uh, fake Apple watch is on the right. And so they're taking this collaborative ecosystem in a different way than the West does, which is um, the manufacturers are releasing schematics and designs openly and freely, not the actual designers themselves, and then they take those and just put those straight into finished products that are consumer grade. Um, and, and in terms of the volumes we're talking about, um, the, the watch, so I went to the factory where they make both of these. The one on the left, in March they were making 5,000 a day um, and they still hadn't even sold, they have been sold but they actually weren't shipping those. So they're shipping basically 100,000 watches plus a week um, in, in huge, huge volumes. So, uh, you know, the, the reality is, is when you're actually iterating like this and using collaborative boards from the manufacturers themselves, you can produce volumes uh, and variations very, very quickly. And so here's the net result of that is just one um, picture I took of a vendor in Shenzhen. You've got 
tens of different models of the exact same watch, but chances are they're using the exact same boards. So, um, you know, my question is, is, you know, the future of collaborative manufacturing is, you know, the way we took it is not necessarily the right answer, but there is a question and there is a need to basically make collaboration and make manufacturing easier to, to basically scale up a product. And, and I don't have an answer for that. I know that China's got one way of going about this, which is, you know, very, working very closely with the manufacturer and actually using this n same basic schematics on the internals and using the software as your differentiator and your design, uh, external design is a differentiating factor. Should we copy them? I don't know. It's a very good question to, to, that I pose because at the end of the day, it's going to be cheaper, faster. The question is, is the quality there? And uh, that's a yes and no. But um, I, I'd love to talk to people after, after my talk to see what you think about um, how this can evolve because uh, you know, from our need, we see thousands of people that need manufacturing and, and this is not going away as manufacturing, as uh, prototyping gets easier and easier and easier. How do people scale? We don't have the solution. I don't see any solutions right now in the world, but you know, I would love to kind of brainstorm and try and figure out ways to go about this. So thank you so much. Thank you, Emil.